Welcome to Harton and Cleden Park for this weekend of worship which sees us reopen our church buildings for public worship. That is a huge joy and um, a huge excitement and uh, frankly quite a scary prospect and it has been such a difficult thing to divide people up and shoehorn them in to the services. I am really hoping that everyone who has wanted to be able to join in worship publicly can do, has done, has been able to and um, yet we still gather those who are away with family, those who were not yet confident uh, to be in the building, those who are waiting just a little bit longer, those who are on the edge of our worshipping community and just feeling their way in to being a part of it. Whoever you are and wherever you are joining us from, you are welcome to worship this weekend. This weekend is the first public worship back. It's the first public worship back at St Peter's since the middle of March and it should have been the village fair for Harton this weekend. It is St Peter's dedication festival and um, the dedication weekend which uh, the little bit of text that we have tells us that it rained in 1867 when that um, auspicious day uh, dawned and uh, we had hoped that it wouldn't be raining this weekend for us to have the village fair and barbecue and um, a mini olympics alongside it. Uh, we are still celebrating because we are back in the building so it is still a different but a still a celebration weekend. It is also the first uh, weekend back for worship for St Cuthbert's as well, not the dedication weekend there and in fact we have already um, opened for one service when we took John Curry's funeral into church a few weeks ago but for us to join together in worship in a Eucharist will be a huge thanksgiving. The word Eucharist means thanksgiving and it gives us the opportunity to give thanks that we can gather even just some of us. So those of you who are not confident yet about being in the building are still part of our prayer and those who we know are m m part of our main um, regular congregation, if they're not in the building, they will still have been invited to join in the worship. They will have received uh, a pack for Holy Communion at home so that everyone can receive from the table as we uh, open our tables again uh, in public worship. If you um, haven't and you would like to receive Holy Communion from our now reopened table then please do let us know and we will make that happen. So in both churches we are celebrating. We are conscious that only a few of us are celebrating physically together again because our community is still broken by the distance that we need to keep to keep everyone safe and so it is only a smallish proportion of our people who are regular people who are regathering this weekend and we also are looking forward to welcoming those who have been just on the edge or who have over the last few months realised that they want to be a part of a welcoming and a uh, praising congregation in our communities. You are hugely welcome to brave treading in to our presence and we will be delighted to draw you into God's presence in the building if you come and see us. If you want to tell us that you would like to come then please do contact the vicarage or one of our Facebook pages or church web pages and let us know and we will make sure that you have all of the guidance that you need and all of the uh, information that you might like and that we are looking at to welcome you in when you do. This uh, evening's worship that we are looking at, or morning worship if you've been listening to it sneakily on the phone line beforehand, this evening's worship is uh, the same liturgy that we have been running through our uh, weeks over since Pentecost and Trinity and it's the liturgy that will carry us through until Advent and it is this evening led by Colin who um, brings his beautiful Welsh lilt to the liturgy 
and we are going to gather everybody in to that prayer this evening and we will look forward to juggling the people who are present in the building and the people who are dispersed in the houses and knowing that the whole is a beautiful uh, gathering in the spirit of praise and prayer and thanksgiving wherever we are wherever we are joining from whether we have seen each other this morning or whether we have not seen each other for months or whether we are waiting for just a little bit longer before we brave going out whether we didn't want to sit on an uncomfortable church pew and can prefer to join in worship from the comfort of our city wherever we are gathering we are gathering in the name of jesus christ our risen savior and we are delighted to come into god's presence tonight come now is the time to time to give your heart come just as you are to worship come just as you are before your God How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this service. Up to now, we have not been able to worship together physically, but I have looked forward to each service, as I'm sure you have also. So please, wherever you may be, let's all come together in praise. 
The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lord our God reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy, and give him glory. Let us pray. Lord, direct our thoughts. Teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you, in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for those things we have thought, said and done, which separate us from you and from one another. You love us, but we find it hard to love others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help, but we ignore the cries of others. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You forgive us, but we bear grudges against each other. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Raise the rafters with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountain are his also. The Lord is our God and we are his. The people of his pasture and the sheep of his flock. Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from all the highest places in the town. You are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, Come, eat my bread and drink my wine. I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. Your word is a lantern to our feet. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people but as wise making the most of the time, because the days are evil. Do not be foolish, but understand that the will, what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs amongst yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times, and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your word is a lantern to our feet. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus according to John. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. 
The Jews then disputed amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So said Jesus to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. Now raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I I live because the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This bread that came down from heaven, not like the one your ancestors ate, they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the Gospel of the Lord. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. I'm very conscious that though we are coming back together today, in fact, the act of coming back together divides us. For several teen weeks, we have looked forward to meeting together for worship, gathering online, together yet apart, knowing that we are held by our commonalities, sharing the same worship, whether on the internet, on the phone, or reading along in the paper copy, just as we share our experience of lockdown. Today we have splintered into separate groups. As much as it is a delight to be able to worship in the buildings again, it is very clear that things are, of course, not normal. And in the joy there is sadness that we are only a part here in the building in each service today. That we are a part again, absolutely as much as we are together again. We were committed from the beginning of lockdown to finding ways to ensure worship was also available to those not online as well as those more tech savvy. My goodness, but it takes much more work than all the hours we are usually in church and preparing to be in church. But it has been worth it. From ensuring that Holy Week was indeed holy and the great Easter feast indeed powerful, to the utter delight of 50 different voices from across our congregations leading us in worship since. It's been incredible. Along the way, we've become more accessible to those who can no longer get to church, to those who work on Sundays, to those who, for a myriad of reasons, care responsibilities perhaps, etc., cannot or could not be in church. By closing the buildings, we have, to a certain extent, opened the church. I'm sorry that the world was never such that seeking to be able to do that was high enough on our agenda before. We have learned a lot over lockdown. We must continue to apply it. And by opening the church, we must absolutely not close it again. So here we are now back in the buildings. It has been a long enforced fast. And how beautiful are our buildings. They have missed us. It is important to gather together in the building as God's people, to bring prayer and praise and thanksgiving. But we need to recognise too that however awesome these places are, there is more to be said. This is the house of God. One of the things I think many have learned over these weeks is how much we can and we should pray at home or wherever we are. For our house is also the house of God, a place into which he is invited. We have all taken God home with us in lockdown. 
in ways we might not have acknowledged before. That the church is made up of people has been so evident. God's house is truly a house in which there are many rooms, in which, even if apart, we are together. Together joining in regular daily prayer, whether morning, midday, evening or night. Together imagining our friends in their houses and our pew mates in theirs as we pray our way through the parish street prayers. We can do holy work sitting at the telephone or keyboard as we call or message those on our contact lists. We can hold those circumstances and the lives people have shared with us in prayer. How good it is to be able to rejoice in good news and to embrace virtually from afar in bad. Those relationships have only deepened. We are God's people and he builds us up into temples of living stones. It is difficult to replace the cool permanence of a church that has been prayed in over many generations with anywhere that you put together as a private prayer corner or shed at home. There is something about the chain of lives entwined in praise and thanksgiving, in joys and sorrows, that makes our buildings awesome places indeed. I am delighted that we are able to be back, for the moment at least. But I hope that we now know more, something more. This is the gate of heaven. Yes, our places are awesome, and yes, they are the house of God. Where his people gather to adore him and to be sent by him. For the gate of heaven is a two-way gate. We've put this into practice well, while the gate, a cat flap for people, has been set to out only. This church is not just the building, but the bigger picture, and more than the sum of its parts. It's not the one hour on a Sunday and coffee with our friends afterwards, but the shopping for neighbours, the encouraging postcards, the pocket hugs, the posies keeping spirits up. It's the sourcing of surprise small gifts, the long chats building new and deepening existing friendships, the sharing of hopes and dreams and anxieties and griefs. The morning prayer picture shared around the ladies, the sunflower competitions, the utterly remarkable trade or not trade in bedding plants or boxes of cake or frogs materialising on doorsteps all around the parish. It's the well over a hundred face masks, visor bands and other items made for nurses and care staff. The continued contributions to the food bank and the generosity of so many of you towards running a holiday club, even in these unusual times. This is church. This is the gate of heaven. This is the house of God. Beautiful living stones and bricks here in the buildings. And this is the house of God, the beautiful temple built of living stones. You out there too. For those of us able or comfortable to be, and in the quota for being in church today, we can gather again also around the table to receive communion. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Do we hear that in the building with relief? What about the people who are not here. Well, we have endeavoured to enable all those who would like to receive communion and who can't be at one of the services today to receive consecrated bread from one of the first Eucharists we've celebrated so that we can be in some small way together. But we really must be careful to keep our hearts open to and mindful of those words which we have prayed through lockdown in spiritual communion. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me 
will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Where we receive you, there you are in the midst of us. Wherever we receive you, there you are in the midst of us. Wherever we are, as we call on your name and welcome you into our hearts, seeking your will for our lives in our hopes and desires, asking you to curb our excesses and lead us out of temptation and sin. Wherever we sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody to the Lord, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything. Wherever we love our neighbour, Wherever we do justly and act humbly and love mercy, there are you, the living bread which feeds the hungry and heals the sick as we bring your nourishment and your life to those around us. There you are in the midst of us. Whether we are gathered in this awesome building or in our own homes, or gathered, hosted by other disciples. Wherever we hold out the bread of life, to give it to others, that is none other than the gate of heaven. It's most likely that this strange state of affairs will go on for some while yet, most certainly till Christmas and maybe even onward toward next Easter. So whilst we can rejoice, some of us, for ourselves to be back in a building we love today, and rejoice together for being together, we are still apart, and we shall remain apart for a season. So our desire to be that community which is together Sharing lives and goods, as the early stories of the Acts of the Apostles described it, must continue. We cannot lay aside where we have been. Rather, we need now to build on it as a foundation of something new. Our period of exile may essentially be over, but in exile we have learnt much about ourselves and we have learned more than how much we have missed our buildings. We have learned how to be church, how to be a living temple, how to be the gate of heaven, how the house of God has room for so many more than an individual building does. As we gather together in part, to receive the Eucharist again today. May we remember that in the Eucharist, we recognise ourselves as blessed and broken. And may we remember that even divided, separated, apart, yet we are blessed and we are together and will remain together. For we are united in the one body of Christ and in Christ. And may we remember too that we are sent from this table back out into the world to live and to continue living his risen life. Amen. i
Christ came and proclaimed the gospel. Peace to those who are far off and peace to those who are near. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, Give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, to whose glory we celebrate this house of prayer, you praise you for the many blessings you have given to those who worship you here, and we pray that all those who seek you in this place may find you, and being filled with the Holy Spirit, may become a living temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for this church, for all who have found here healing and peace, new hope and forgiveness. We bow down before you in love and worship. May all who come here find this a holy place, filled with your presence. O oh Lord, may we find here a wonderful renewal and refreshment for the Spirit, and also your guiding love in abundance. Father, 
Make this building a beacon of hope and truth for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May our church be known throughout this community as a place where all may come in hope and joy. Grant us courtesy to welcome old and new and sensitivity to discern the needs of all. Lord, visit with your love all those who are held back from opening their hearts to you through guilt and fear, through scorn and pride, or through indifference. Draw them all into the great assembly of the faithful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wider community and the world in the midst of great trouble heartache and despair everywhere. We pray for all those who are caught up in warfare and strife, for everyone who is suffering from COVID, for all who still live in isolation, afraid now to venture into the outside world through fear. We pray for children who are distressed or in pain and for older people and for all who are vulnerable or alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, Father, for all those who have worshipped here in this place and who now enjoy the peace of eternal rest. We remember at this time Betty Nicholson, Michael Coulson, Jeff Bruce, Desmond Daniel Schalke, John Leslie Mack, John Taylor, John Tinmouth, Irene Smith, Sylvia Johnson, Don Bateson, James English and Reg Seeley. We join with them and with the communion of all your saints to praise you now and forever. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. So, as our Father taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen god of power may the boldness of your spirit transform us May the gentleness of your Spirit lead us. May the gifts of your Spirit equip us to serve and worship you, now and always. Amen. To a troubled world, peace from Christ. To a searching world, love from Christ. To a waiting world, hope from Christ. Eternal giver of love and life, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news that we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us build a house
Tears 